tonight. How far will the White House go to get you to watch the State of the Union address? Facebook takes on Snopes and a skull-crushing robot that's really cute. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 257 for Tuesday, January 20th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com. Invest in yourself for 2015. Lynda.com has thousands of courses to help you learn new tech, business, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N-2. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the tech feed. Tonight is President Obama's second to last State of the Union address. And you know what that means. Animated GIFs. That's right, in an attempt to steal the attention of millennials, White House.gov blog reports today that Obama's team is using every piece of technology known to man to get you to watch and engage with the speech. The White House is calling this a river of content, and it includes videos, tweets, and WebSocket technology that uses a back-end connection to publish content in real time during the speech without, the blog says, jeopardizing performance or security. But even as the president is gearing up for a State of the Union address that will no doubt contain promises of privacy and cybersecurity protections, the AP reports today that technology experts who analyze the government's health insurance website, healthcare.gov, say that a handful of companies are collecting highly specific information from the government website. Now, this includes information consumers entered when they applied for medical co coverage. This includes age, income, zip code, and more. The AP reports that outside firms are barred from using the data to further their own business interests, but the administration did not explain how it ensures that its privacy and security policies are being followed. A new report on Facebook, commissioned by Facebook, says that the social network is responsible for $227 billion in global economic activity and 4.5 million jobs outside of Facebook. Some economists are questioning this report, going as far as to call the claims meaningless. We've invited Harrison Weber, news editor at VentureBeat, to talk about this and another Facebook story. Thanks for joining us, Harrison. Thanks for having me. Now, what do you make of this claim by Facebook? Well, uh, there's no doubt that Facebook creates some sort of value besides distracting us from work, <laughs> uh, which arguably costs a lot of money and does not add that much to the uh, you know, the economic gain uh, in the U.S. or not internationally, uh, there's no doubt that it has created a strong ecosystem uh, for marketers, for app developers, uh, and maybe maybe it encourages people to adopt mobile devices. Uh, but a lot of uh, economists and, and uh, pundits are calling kind of BS on the idea that this is, you know, that every like ha has an economic value. And, uh, and to make matters a little bit more confusing, uh, Facebook isn't sharing exactly what they've, you know, the numbers they've used to calculate how valuable a single like is. So, so in short, it's not, it's not, um, it's not something that I would bet money on if that these figures are accurate. But value, to some degree, you know, can be argued. Right. So you said that maybe it makes people adopt mobile devices. Now, Sheryl Sandberg says that Facebook is the only reason. I'm paraphrasing here, but she says that. Facebook is the only reason many people buy phones at all, especially in the developing world. Do you believe this? To some degree, sure. And, and that might be a cop out on my part. I mean, <laughs> it's definitely a thing. You know, I, I think one of the one of her other quotes, I'll per paraphrase her as well. One of her other quotes has been something along the lines of some people don't understand the difference between Facebook and the Internet. Um, that's not that good to me. That kind of sounds like AOL, uh, which <laughs> Facebook has been gradually becoming for a while now. Right. Um, but, but yeah, yeah. I, I totally believe that for a certain segment of, of you know international populations, Facebook is a huge driver. Staying in touch with people is a huge driver. But can Facebook claim ownership of that economic value is debatable. And you know they're going to use these numbers to tout like. Um, these these numbers to top the value they create in arguments and political arguments and and probably other things like that. But you know, like I was saying, it's just a little shaky. If they didn't exist, another social network would exist. 
uh, probably take its place. And, you know, so that value would exist regardless. So it's, it, like I said, it's a little shaky. Right. So Facebook made another announcement today. They said they plan to rid our news feeds of hoaxes and misleading emails. And you wrote an article about that. H- how are they going to do this? Yeah, so we, we covered that. Basically, they plan to do what we probably already thought they were doing, which is when someone clicks, you know, uh, like a little, like there's a little button next to a different Facebook post, you can click report an issue and you can uh, select that you think it contains false information. When someone does click that button, they're now going to take into account that it might contain false information. Oh, so, so that's not nothing new. That choice isn't new. It's been there? The, the choice has been there, uh, but the results have not been there. Oh. Uh, so apparently they've been gathering this data. Maybe they've been testing it to see if it yields uh, you know, accurate results. Uh, but now they're going to start uh, taking it into account, or at least now they've announced they will. Maybe they already did. So what you pointed out was that when uh, people see a hoax, they know it's a hoax, they'll comment that's a hoax, so you know, they'll put their, the link to Snopes or something. And so that by commenting, those posts are then showing up more often in our feed. Is, is that correct? Yeah, it's a pretty funny effect on Facebook. If you, you know, if you were to write, it's the same for every page. If you were to write something ridiculous, people respond in anger, but Facebook takes any feedback and engagement as a reason to promote something more. And so, so yeah, it's 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 a you know a very common problem for Facebook, uh, but but now they're 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 really encouraging people to to kind of click the button, say this is false, uh, and then Facebook will uh, not promote the posts, and they will, or rather rather depromote the posts, and add a little notice saying that you know this this information may not be reliable. So they're not going to delete anything. No, okay. they're not deleting anything, okay. as far as I know. So. Uh- now, how are they, so they're, they're determining what's a hoax basically just by people reporting it. They're not going through each article and deciding what's a hoax or what's not. They may have some sort of curation going on, uh, but from what they've said, they're basically relying on uh, user curation, which, you know, can totally work. It could also totally not work. Like when someone, you know, let's say someone hates a publication and they want to kind of take it out on them, there might be some sort of unfair uh, clicking of buttons, but apparently it's accurate. Apparently, uh, this isn't an issue. They've tested it, and apparently, they say it hasn't been an issue for uh, satire, uh, like something from The Onion. You know, could be counted as as a as a you know an inaccurate news story. Right. Um, there was an Onion piece today that uh, I think we have that picture. It's Joe Biden getting ready for the State of the Union address. He's getting ready early to set up a fog machine. I don't know if you if we have that picture. We might not have it. There it is. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> He's already there with his fog machine. Uh, so, so if I post that, then some people they're they're going to have some kind of way of telling that that's not misleading. I'm just meant to post that because it's funny and it's Face- funny onion. Facebook wants to reassure us that that will not be an issue. Uh, whether or not it is an issue remains to be seen. But for now, <laughs> they say re- re- relax. It's fine. Satire is cool. Yeah, it'll be interesting because, I mean, there's some things I get a lot of posts on my Facebook feed, people saying things about vaccines, like they'll cause autism. I think a lot of people think that that is accurate. I personally don't. And so whether that's a hoax or not, that that will be an interesting, you know, I don't know how they'll figure that out. Do you have any idea? Yeah, yeah it's that's a very, very messy topic for any company that deals with media, those kind of fringe issues. The problem also is that Facebook has, you know, knowingly or not, encouraged uh, a lot of kind of shaky kind of styles of, maybe not styles of reporting, but um, styles of content generation, which, you know, cause kind of hyperbole to exist. Right. Well, when you so s- the extreme stuff is what gets the clicks, which gets regurgitated through the, the system. And that's the same thing for, for things that might be slightly inaccurate or just extreme. Right. I mean, when you see it, it's it's sometimes hard to tell what's an actual news source and what's just someone's blog or, you know, the way Facebook does it, it's hard for people to tell, I think, sometimes. Yeah, it's certainly, they've, they've got something down where it's, it's, it's kind of this, the stuff that, I guess it varies depending on who you follow. I mean, there's many jokes that exist, like, oh, my aunt, the articles my aunt shares, or the articles <laughs> yeah. my uncle shares. It's like, it's always like the worst stuff. Uh, not my aunt and uncles, I will say, <laughs> for the record. If they're watching. Uh, but there's the joke that, yeah, if they're watching, only if they're watching. Not mine either. Uh, but but there's, but there's those jokes like how, you know, 
the worst of the internet comes out, you know, like the, the, the clones of the clones of Upworthy start right. kind of rearing their heads. And then, uh, yeah, so, so it, it'll be messy. They're not going to, I don't think they think they can do it perfectly, um, but, but they seemed very reassuring in their announcement today. Right. I have one more question for you. Is Bill Gates going to send me $10,000 if I forward the email I received from him? Yes, 100%. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Harrison. Harrison is from, he's the news editor from Venture Beat. And what are you working on next, Harrison? Well, I'll be working on the uh, State, of the New, uh, State of the Union coverage today. All right, well, we'll look forward to that. Thank you so much. Cool, thank you. Coming up, Elon Musk is in the news again, and we show you a giant robot who just learned to walk without a cable. But first... This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. lynda.com is used by millions of people around the world and has over 4,500 courses on topics like web development, photography, visual design, and business, as well as software training like Excel, WordPress, and Photoshop. What's your plan for 2015? Do you want to sharpen your business skills to ask your boss for a raise or make yourself more marketable to find a new job? I recommend lynda.com courses like Excel Tips and Tricks, Managing Your Manager, and the Weekly Office Workshop Series, which gives you a new Microsoft Office tip every Tuesday. Whether you have 15 minutes or 15 hours, each course is structured so you can learn at your own pace from start to finish. And of course, all lynda.com courses are taught by experts who are accomplished professionals at the top of their fields. Do something good for yourself in 2015 and sign up for a free 10-day trial to lynda.com by visiting lynda.com slash tn2. You'll get unlimited access to every course on lynda.com, including access on your iOS and Android devices, plus new courses as they're added each week. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash tn2 to try it free for 10 days. Go ahead. I challenge you to learn something new in 2015. And now for a few updates on stories we've talked about before. Yesterday, we told you that Google is hinting at an investment in Elon Musk's company, SpaceX. Today, Bloomberg puts a dollar figure on this rumor, reporting that according to a person familiar with the matter, the investment will be on the order of $1 billion. And in other Google news, we reported last week that Google refused to sign President Obama's student privacy pledge. The pledge, designed to protect data collected from students in the classroom, was signed ahead of Obama's speech by 75 companies, including Apple and Microsoft. In a reversal today, Google signed the pledge along with other notable companies, including the YouTube-based educational organization Khan Academy. Amazon, however, has yet to sign. Now, we still don't know for sure that North Korea hacked Sony, but we do know a little more about how the hack happened. According to Recode, attackers exploited a zero-day vulnerability to access the studio's corporate network. Zero-day day vulnerabilities are often exposed through phishing, spear phishing attacks, which are emails containing malicious attachments and targeted at specific individuals. And Twitter announced today its acquisition of an Indian startup called ZipDial. ZipDial is a really interesting company. It exists to help marketers reach customers in emerging markets where mobile internet connectivity is considered an expensive luxury. ZipDial is best known for something called missed call marketing. Users have call a special toll-free number for a specific business, then they hang up before the call is answered. And by hanging up, they're not charged for the call, but the system captures the user's phone number, which is then served with content through phone calls, text messages, or apps. Now, one way this service has already been used is through a specific number that returned cricket scores via SMS. So the cricket fan didn't actually need to connect to the internet to get the scores. This is great for people in areas where there isn't internet access or where internet access is prohibitively expensive. A zip dial blog post announced the deal Announcing the deal said their goal is to make Twitter content accessible to 100% of the world's mobile users, including those in emerging markets who will be experiencing the mobile internet for the first time, end quote. Terms of the deal were not disclosed, although Bloomberg reported that Twitter paid $30 million. NBC Today said it will stream the Super Bowl free online. That includes pregame coverage, the halftime show starring Katy Perry, woo-woo, and even an episode of the TV drama The Blacklist after the game. That's good news. The bad news is that the stream will be available only on desktop computers. The reason is that Ver Verizon has bought Verizon Wireless has bought the exclusive rights to stream the game on mobile devices. NBC's free coverage begins February 1st at noon Eastern time and ends at 10 p.m. Go to NFL.com or SuperBowl.com to watch. 
And finally, remember that creepy Atlas robot designed by Google's Boston Dynamics that could run over rocks? Wasn't it cute? Despite being rather Terminator-esque, the robot had two drawbacks. It was loud, and it was also tethered by a power and control cable. Well, not anymore. In a new video released today, DARPA showed off the latest version of Atlas. About 75% of the robot was redesigned, including uh, it now has its own power source, more powerful legs, and repositioned arms for easier skull crushing. It's much quieter for sneaking up behind you in the dark, and its wireless emergency kill switch its emergency kill switch is wireless because wireless is so reliable. Oh, and one more new feature highlighted in the video. It can open doors more easily. How convenient. Now I am scared. Join us tomorrow for a special Windows 10 event. I'll be waking up early to hang out with Tech News Today's Mike Elgin as we get a closer look at the newest Microsoft operating system. You can watch live at 9 a.m. Pacific at live.twit.tv. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific at 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.